Yasmin Lukat, thank you for being on 20 Minute Leaders. Thank you for inviting me, Michael. How are you? I'm actually great. I'm uh, enjoying uh, taking the time off. Uh, family's with me. I'm, you know, I, I'm worried for the world, but personally, I'm I'm doing what I can. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, a, it's pretty interesting how you know. On one hand, this is you know a, a crisis that we're all navigating in different ways. Uh, on the other hand, it's it's a really interesting time for self reflection and and taking a step back and and thinking about what it's like. I'm actually so my family is on Tel Aviv, but I have this little guy here that just joined the family, Benny. Hey, Benny. Hi, Benny. Oh, God, he's so cute. Yeah, so he's nine weeks old now, so he's still learning that my hand is not his favorite toy, which it definitely is right now. Um, soon it's going to be the ear. I see it starting. Uh, so hopefully he'll just sit aside and play with his uh, duck toy, which is also a little bit disturbing, but that's okay. My dog has this fetish for toilet paper. He goes and he like, takes it off the thing and it's like, not the right time for this doggy, not the right time. So for, yeah, and, and it's like the worst because they, they can wrap, they can rip it to so many bits and pieces. Unbelievable. Yasmin, you are uh, probably the most well-connected person I can ever think of. Um, I mean, you know, just looking at the talk show that you do, uh, on uh, on the ICC at uh, JCC is is incredible and I enjoy all the time listening to it and um, and I'd love to hear a little bit about the journey that you've done from you know corporate life to the to Stanford Business School icon uh, the Shark Tank of Israel just let's just start by telling me who you are and let's roll from there. Wow, where do I start? I yeah, mean, one thing I have to tell you about like the, the talk show that we do now. It's not about people that we know. I think we started with a few people that we know and it, it was good and we started getting incoming. People are, uh, oh, I know so-and-so and I would love to him to come to the program and, um, and and that's how it happened. So I think if you have something good in hand, if, you're gonna, if you have a good product, people are just going to uh, come to you and it's not just about who you know. And it's so pretty true also for the business world, right? You have a good product, you don't have to necessarily chase partnerships and investors. You, they, all of a sudden they start coming to you because you have, you're creating value. Honestly, it's true about everything. It's true about philanthropy. It's true about relationships. Um, it's true about business. It's true about everything that you do. Yeah. If you have a good product, it's, it's marketing itself. So who am I? I was born and raised in Israel. Uh, <laughs> see myself as an Israeli living uh, in Silicon Valley. I'm in the U.S. for the past uh, almost 17 years. Wow. Um, for the past six years, I'm running a nonprofit, which I founded, which is called Icon. We're a community of people that share passion for high tech and innovation coming from Israel. Uh, and together we want to see the Israeli high tech thrive. Uh, we do this through a variety of events and, uh, and programs. And it has been actually really challenging for us because you cannot do events anymore now. We have a, a boot camp that was supposed to come up. We had two big events that, that we had to cancel in March. How do we reinvent ourselves uh, in this right. time? I think what we're doing is just shifting temporarily everything, you know, changing all our content. I see the same thing happening with the startups, like rethinking the product and what can we do uh, for that. But hold on, that's not like jump the horse. I feel now that I'm interviewing people all the time, I feel like a good interviewee. Don't <laughs> jump. Answer the question, uh, which was a big question. You should ask shorter questions, like something that I can. But I'm interested about everything, and I only have 20 minutes, so I I can't. It's it's too hard. Okay, so ICON, I did uh, an undergrad in Tel Aviv University, Law, Accounting, and Economics. I did a graduate degree in Stanford Business School. Best years of my life professionally, an amazing, amazing time, which like this atmosphere, and I'm sure you're experiencing the same thing now, which everything, everything can happen. Uh, so Unbelievable. Many capable people around you and, and everything, everything, so much, so many skills and everything can happen. Um, Actually, interesting, we are reconnecting with the class now because of this, when everyone is at home. Our WhatsApp group is thriving. We, we had a reunion. We actually have already had two reunions, and I spoke with people that I haven't spoken with for, for like so many years. So, it, you know, Wonderful. the situation brings new opportunities. Uh, I did, um, you know, some corporate America before. I did a startup before. Yep. So I was all over the place. And uh, I've been really happy at Icon. I think it's kind of combining many things that, that I'm strong at uh, and that I enjoy. I love 
um, spending time with the entrepreneurs and seeing like the fire and the passion in their eyes uh, about what they do and their devotion. And so, so what is the mission of Icon? Is there a sort of a, a vision or a mission statement that you go by of the value that sure. you're trying to create? Uh, we're a paid forward community. So we don't ask for payment for the services we offer, but instead we ask everyone that's part of the community to extend the help to someone else from the community. Um, and we just want to see change and we want to impact change and um, help Israeli uh, technology companies and startups thrive uh, and give them an unfair advantage just because they're Israeli. And there's like a community here that wants to support that. The Israeli community here, the Jewish community here, and actually people that um, are neither, but they understand that Israel is the biggest technology hub outside of, uh, of the U.S. and they want to stay relevant and, and staying relevant, meaning being part of what's happening in the Israeli tech world. And, and where does that even come from? Because, you know, going from, from corporate to startup to business school, I mean, these things are not, you know, it, it's not the traditional path to go from that to running a nonprofit. So how did this even start? Why are you doing this? I always did it like I always did that. I always found that I have to put like a few sides and a few hours aside every day to kind of help with interest to people that I know that asking or give them advice or help them. Um, you know, I would love to tell you that this was like a stra strategic plan and that uh, it was a strategic process behind it. And I set a goal and I got to the goal, but none of this is true. It's kind of happened. It's kind of there was an opportunity and I opened the window and I looked through it and it was nice. And then I didn't think it's going to be so amazing, but every step I took, there was another opportunity that I was able to take. So it wasn't, I didn't have this vision that Icon will be what it is today. Uh, and it just slowly um, evolved. And I listened to the people we, we, are, we work with and, and understood their needs and found the right solutions for them. And I think the fact that we put this as a nonprofit actually was really important to our success because um, when you ask someone to help someone else and you don't, you're not really making anything out of this, you just really want to improve um, the situation for everyone, it's a much easier ask. And, and I see so many people that don't have time to do anything want to be part of what we do and want to help. So no, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, I had, I had the privilege of coming a few times to the, to the Icon offices because you graciously enough allowed me to come and, and work from there sometimes. And every single time I walk in and you have these incredible startups sitting in a round table with one of the most prominent people in Silicon Valley, whether they're Jewish, Israeli or not even. And, and the, the conversation is just so fruitful. And you can see that everybody's just trying to help each other there. And there's no transactions. There's no business. It's about the relationships and about actually helping. And there's so many anecdotal stories of things that happen and people that connected to it. It's just like, it's, you know, it's endless. I think one thing that I saw this year that happened with Icon, which I'm, I'm you know, particularly proud of is that instead of just paying it forward within the community, this was the first time we, as a community, pay forward outside of the community. And what we did is adopted a center for entrepreneurship for youth in the periphery of the country, periphery of Israel, in the city of Netivot. And our uh, founders, that most of them are centered in the center of the country, that um, centered in the center, well, are located in the center of the country. Um, they're driving there and they're mentoring the high school kids and helping them. Uh, we do it with the nonprofit that's called Unistream that's yes. active in Israel. So we're not inventing, we will. We just connected uh, our skills and our community with someone who's already doing this. And I think it's amazing. It's so rewarding. Um, no, that, it, it's, it's wonderful. Good. So now, and now most recently, you're very, very well known in Israel as a shark. I wouldn't say very well known. I was that's well. Fact. You know, Yasmin, in in the circles that I run with, you're very very well known. So I don't know, people told me before you shouldn't do it. You wouldn't be able to go on the street. Nobody's ever gonna, you know, people will recognize you. It's not happening. They said none of like every, everybody's scared <laughs> me. <It's> not. <laughs> it's well, not. I'll tell you other you're... things offline. I don't want to say it here about how people scared me, but. Um, I don't feel I'm well known, but it's not the thing. It's not the thing. Yes, I'm on the Israel. I'm the cast on the Israeli Shark Tank. We filmed it about a little more than a year ago, last January, and it's just starting to air. It started during January. They stopped the season. We filmed 14 episodes, I think, and they already, already aired uh, seven. Yeah. So it's half the season coming up now because of the situation. They changed the schedule. Sure. Uh, which I think is cool, and it was an amazing experience. Really like taking everything I learned from um, the high tech world and from the technological startups because we we saw startups there from from every vertical. Right. People with dreams, people with ideas, uh, and bringing what I learned 
to other verticals to someone that developed like this gadget for her salon or uh, someone that has a breastfeeding pump. So many, um, many different ideas from many verticals, people that come from all over the country, people that just actually have a dream, have a passion, have this sparkle in their eyes and they dare to go and try to make a change and, and, and taking this chance um, of being on, you know, in front of the sharks, being on TV and doing something with their dreams. And um, I got a lot from meeting those people. I really enjoyed that and sitting with the fellow sharks and right. learning from them. So definitely it was an amazing experience. And a lot of these fellow sharks are also heavily involved with Icon and with other things that you're doing. So it's really, it's a continuation of your relationship with them. I felt lucky. I mean, we were five of us out of uh, the only, there was only one I didn't know before. Only that I haven't met him before. I met him just before the show, but he's the only one I didn't work with. Yeah. And, you know, um, it was just sitting with friends that we work with all the time. And I think it showed because we know each other and we have a good chemistry offline. So I think it showed online too. And it's part of the appeal of the show. So how many, how many uh, different, you know, ideas or pitches did you see th uh, throughout the filming of the show? I think we've seen about a hundred. Okay, so I want to I want to get you this one the one thing you noticed of those a hundred that if you could give an advice to everybody you would in go back in time you would give them what would it be? Well, there were many different things, but I think the one thing that probably the mistake that most uh, entrepreneurs do not just on the show um, they have an idea. Um, they think they, uh, they have an idea, something technical, something not, but they're not sure, you know, but they don't do enough validation and they don't know if there's actually a problem. So fine, you found something, um, but is there a problem that you're solving? Is the problem big enough? Well, I mean, not big enough. Is it painful enough that people are willing to pay for the solution? Maybe it is a problem, but nobody really cares about it. Um, that people are willing to pay for the solution. And are there enough people? that have this problem and um, are willing to pay for it. So I think uh, people don't do enough research and they don't do enough validation, uh, which is not just important for yourself because you want to know you're going the right path, but it's also extremely important when you go and uh, want to speak with an investor. You have to have not just a hunch, but like a research that you've done, um, you know, whatever indications you have that your solution is not just technical, technically possible, but it's also addressing a problem that enough people are willing to pay for. I, I think this goes along the same, a similar line to an advice that I keep hearing from a lot of investors about remaining humble and remaining, you know, sincere about what you also don't know. And I think that one of the issues that, that, that the startup world faces is that a lot of people get so excited about their idea and their solution that it seems almost impossible to them that they could be wrong or that there's another way to do something and they fall in love with this notion that they've created for themselves. And I definitely know that when I, when I'll have the chance to build something of my own, I always want to remain, you know, humble enough to be, to be challenging myself and having others challenge me. No, I don't think it's just about humility. I think it's about, you have to have facts to back up your hunches. Um, and you know, if you sit in front of me and you're very humble, you say, you know, I don't know this, I don't know this, I don't know this. Go look up for the answers. Don't come and ask for my money before you actually research this. <laughs> it's not just about admitting what you don't know. It's about trying to find the answers. That makes a lot of sense. Yes, I mean, you yeah. over the years at Icon and before and with Sharks, you've seen so many different industries and so many different startups. What are you excited about? What, what really gets you excited and makes you passionate? Wow, different things. Um, well, oh, it's my dog wants to be part of the show too. <laughs> Um, he's seven months old. So I think the one thing, you know, it's not a vertical or an idea. I'm, I'm passionate about the people. I mean, yeah. I saw it, this is the one thing that I liked in the sharks and one thing that I enjoy, like on my day to day based work with icon. Um, I love working with people that really are passionate about what they do. They have this sparkle in their eyes and it could be a cyber product and it could be a consumer product. It could be a something medical, um, could be something for agriculture, anything, anything when the people, um, you know, when they uh, impacting change, changing the world, changing a company, improving something, uh, and they're passionate about what they're doing and, you know, their customers love it. Uh, I enjoy spending time with them. You know, personally, I also, um, I love the power of the community and yeah. with the deal with Unistream and how we took what we have as a community and we impacted, impacted this, you know, change and helped in the periphery of the country. 
um, that was that really I was passionate about that too. Um, no, that's taking, that's wonderful. You know, really yeah. using leveraging the power of the community. So I think I'm passionate about leveraging power of communities and impacting change with that. Yeah. So now more of a personal question for me. You know, I'm just starting and paving my way through through this experience in Palo Alto and, and I'm so lucky that we that we got to meet quite a few times and form this relationship over over this last year. Uh, so looking down the road, what what advice would you give me as I'm just starting my career here in all different spectrums? What are some things that I should be keeping in mind as I go through this path? I mean, I guess it depends where you want to go. What, what do you want to do? Uh, what's your path? I think now it's like a very interesting time. This is an opportunity to sit and reflect. This is not a time to start a new business. Um, so we put that aside, but it's a time to research business ideas that you have. It's time to uh, create relationships. It's really time to yeah. learn. Um, if you just started a business or if you have a business and you can uh, weather the storm, uh, time to work on your infrastructure, all those projects right. that you never got to, now you have time to do them and look at that. So this is like the sign of the times, uh, brainstorm. I mean, nobody knows what's going to be after. We right. all venture, you know, we're going to all have ideas, but you know, this never happened before. Right. No, uh, no, I think this caliber with the circumstances that we have around us. So it's all educated guesses, but still guesses. So just be ready um, for the day after. No, and I, you know, one of the things that I've been thinking about, not necessarily starting my own thing right now, but you know, I, I did a wonderful uh, venture capital class with Anne from Floodgate at Stanford. And one of the things that we kept iterating over is how hard it is to change consumer behavior and how rare it is that we have an opportunity to radically change how people act and consume stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. And you know, this whole thing that's happening right now, it's one big consumer shift, whether it's for online communication or our relationship norms or working from home. It's it's pretty, pretty incredible. Yasmin, before, it, before we finish, I wanna ask you my last question and I'm putting you a little bit on the spot, but what are three words that you think best describe you? You gotta ask someone else. <laughs> You gotta ask someone else. How, you how would you like? How would you like somebody else to describe you? Okay. Oh, I should have thought about this. You should have let me give people time. How do I like? <laughs> we have time. Uh, you have ten seconds. We have ten seconds. I like honest. I like. I like to describe as honest. I think uh, transparency and um, you know and, and being honest about um, about why you do things and this. I think this is important. Honesty. Um, I think loyalty, trustworthiness, loyalty is, is kind of a different part of that. Um, someone you can count on. Um, these are two things that are important to me. What else? I don't know. How do, would you describe me? Give me one more. I mean, I, you know what? Curious. Curious. I think we share that. And I, I think, think this so. is, you know, why you, you interview people and I, I enjoy doing that too. Um, I want, I mean, I told you when, before we started, we interviewed, um, someone yesterday what was supposed to be 30 minutes ended up being an hour. And then after an hour, I was like, you know, we have to finish the show because it was a live show, but we cut off the show and we continued just chatting with him for another hour. So I would say curious. I want to, you know, I am curious. So I'll add a fourth one just because uh, due to this conversation, just definitely. I can. I'm the moderator and I can. Sure. <laughs> exactly. Uh, people first. I see it at Icon. I see it at, at what are you doing with Unistream and, and Shark Tank and in this conversation. Uh, so, Yasmin, thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you for this friendship and this relationship that we're forming over the years. And uh, best of luck. Thank you for inviting me, Michael. And uh, stay healthy. Stay home. Of course.